Hello, I'm Lorenzo and this is episode 24 of KSP to Mars, where currently we're not going to Mars, but we're launching a rescue mission to the moon. In the previous episode we stranded Bartgard Kerman on the moon with not enough fuel to get off of it again. Today we have redesigned the moon launcher. The upper stage has one tank less, it's one tank shorter, and the lower stage is a little bit bigger. Also, the cores have been upgraded to six, or well, six booster cores now instead of the four, so that should get us a little bit further. Additionally, we ditched the science payload and added um, unmanned controllers, so there's now an empty pod riding on top of this rocket. As you're observing, the thrust to weight ratio of this rocket on at liftoff is fairly low. Um, it's the same problem we had with uh, the smaller rockets. Again, we made it so big that the uh, lower stage engines just don't pack enough punch to accelerate it fast. Another problem is that one of the boosters has sheared off. I have no idea how that happened because it wasn't in the, in the damage report log. Uh, but so far, the rocket is flying well, but as you might be able to predict, a shear like that, an uncontrollable rocket and one tank of unspent fuel is going to lead to problems. And indeed, let's have a look at what happens when that fuel tank runs out, which is in a few seconds. You can see that in the staging bar, one of them is running out quicker and then we will have a very unbalanced rocket, as is exactly what's happening now. Anyway, I was talking about having a slowly lifting, uh, a slowly accelerating rocket, which is bad, but then again, if you're not in a position to add engines, which I decided I wasn't, it is better to add more fuel and rise slower, even though then that extra fuel is not used efficiently. Um, it's better than not doing it at all, I mean. Anyway, here, look at that. One dead engine and one tumbling rocket. Fortunately, this one is unmanned, so we don't care about this at all. It's not like we care so much about the ones that do have Kerbals in them, because, well, we've wasted quite a few already. And let's go ahead and say that this one is unmanned because we've run out of Kerbals. Yes, we've run out, run out of Kerbals for the foreseeable future. Something else I've run out of is uh, pre-recorded videos. This is the last one. In fact, it's only half of a video and the second half will be a live recording again. So, here we go. Relaunched that vehicle and through magic that tank has not sheared off this time. It will interest you to take a look at the Delta V budget in the screen of Kerbal Engineer that's open. It's actually increasing. I've mentioned this before. This is because uh, we are rising uh, and thus getting into a thinner atmosphere where our engines are more efficient. We're rising rap more uh, rapidly than we are actually expending meters per second of Delta V. So the total budget is going up. A peculiar thing of live telemetry readout. So this rocket is so far looking fine. It's wobbling a bit. Uh, that's because the center stack is in fact not strutted to the outer boosters. This is some, well, uh, infancy design problems. Uh, it's causing the rocket to wobble back and forth and not take a very efficient path to orbit. Here we are in orbit, we did make it, but one thing I forgot was to put solar panels on this remote controlled craft and in one orbital pass it ran out of power and, well, basically that means there is now a fully fueled, functional nuclear rescue rocket stuck in orbit, meaning we'll have to launch again. Fortunately, that did give me the opportunity to fix the wobble, um, increasing the efficiency of the ascent stage by a little bit. So here goes the, the third mission of the day already. So far, only um, unmanned hardware has been spent. We got into orbit just fine, it took 20 minutes, so I'm not showing that, and here we are doing our transfer burn to the moon. Made it, and we are getting, uh, preparing to get into a lunar orbit. Of course, Bartgard is landed on the poles, and I did eyeball it from Kerbin that um, we, well, at least we're not having an equatorial orbit, but it's still the inclination was not quite right. So, first things first, doing a, ch a plane change maneuver, which costs about 450 meters per second of delta V. And we'll see if that is affordable in our budget. At the moment we have 5600 meters per second remaining, um, well, which isn't horrible, but it's not great either. Here we are doing our plane change maneuver and preparing to, well, come in for landing really. 
What I'm doing, I tried to set the Bart Guard vehicle as a target and uh, get some indicators for that, but apparently that doesn't really work when it's a landed craft, or I'm having trouble figuring that out. I don't exactly know what's up there, but the trajectory I got was not passing straight over Bart Guard. No matter, Bart Guard has some fuel remaining, so the plan here is to land. Uh, the rescue craft, which is doing its deceleration landing burn now, plan is to land the rescue craft near Bart Guard, and then he can use uh, the remainder of his propulsion and, of course, his jetpack to mosey on over to the rescue vehicle, which will then embrace it in its cold steel heart and take him back to Kerbin. That is the plan. Let's have a look how that goes, and here we go, F fast forwarding to that intercept, and that pod on the surface, that's Bart Guard, and we're passing, well, I wouldn't call it close, but at least it's closer than half a moon away. Now, here, um, old me was doing some thinking, and was getting it terribly wrong, I was thinking, well, it's so close together on the map view, the rocket, Bart Guard rocket and his EVA pack should be easily capable of doing this. And this is, I'm calling it the real solar system scale fallacy. Because these planetary bodies, these celestial bodies, they look the same size as they do in this stock game. Because I haven't changed monitors, I haven't changed resolutions. So all these spheres are the same size in my screen. In reality, or it's a bit of a weird term, but in actuality, they are about 10 times larger. So I'm constantly misjudging the scale. In fact, we're probably landing like a thousand kilometers away from Bardgard. But hey, mission control is feeling optimistic. Bardgard can probably use, use his jetpack to mosey on over to the rover. Why the hell not? So, for now though, it's landing first. And let's see how the electronic brain of this rescue craft gets on. It has a little bit of the same problem that Bardgard lander had, that is that we're expending... Uh, is that the fuel in the tanks, which are also the landing legs, has already been depleted, but we cannot jettison them quite yet, because, well, hey, there are landing legs, so we need them f for a little bit more, but the plan is as soon as Bardgard gets into the command pod, those tanks and legs can, in fact, be jettisoned. So we're coming in for the landing here, nice and low. I'm going to shut up for a while so you can appreciate the beauty of this landing and I can drink a bit of coffee. Because who doesn't like coffee, right? <sighs> yeah, so we're not landed yet. In other news, I played the the episodic game from Telltale, the, the Wolf Among Us. It had its second episode released today, which was again amazing, albeit fairly short. I think I finished that in about 60 to 70 minutes and I've been waiting for a few months for it. Not as long as the one the people that got in on day one because I started that very late, but still whew, one hour is pretty damn short. But it was so amazing. If you haven't heard of these games, go check it out. Go on Steam. It's Telltale Games, um, The Wolf Among Us. Also the, the same guys from the Walking Dead series. If you haven't seen that, that's amazing. Anyway, they're the kind of games where you don't have to really do so much. Except choose what happens. And it's uh, the, sto the, the writing, the stories are really, really good. Uh, so check those out. I'm not even paid to say that. So, crazy. In the meantime, the lunar surface is coming on up to those lander legs. And we will soon see how much delta V we have left for a subsequent takeoff. Go on, land. Damn it, old me is really slow with the landing. This could have been done a lot faster if only he had a little bit more guts. Of course, if you come into the surface uh, really quickly and break at full thrust at the last second, that is the most efficient way. It is also the most scary way. So what you want to do if you're not using mech jab or any sort of mechanical assistance is to get down to a reasonable altitude and then slowly 
guide yourself to the surface. There we are. Landed, and we have 2300 meters per second of delta V left. Let's switch to Bart Guard and see how he gets on. One other thing is that I have to fix is that my screen, my computer keeps going to standby mode when I'm not actually using the mouse. No matter I'm recording, I'm talking, the video software is doing its thing, but hey, the computer decides it's being idle and shuts down the screen, so that's annoying. Anyway, here we are at Bartgard, and he is going to transfer fuel, the last bits of fuel he has, to his upper stage. This is going to be a ballistic Kerbal missile because, well, let's face it, he's not going to have the fuel to go there and land. He's going to shoot himself in the direction and then get out and use his jetpack to land. That's the point, anyway. That's the plan. Uh, if I recall correctly from the Kerbal engineer, he has about 400 meters per second, maybe even 700 meters per second remaining in that escape pod. And if I remember correctly from vague and distant past, the Kerbal jetpacks have about 500 meters per second of delta V as well. So 1 plus 1 is 2, or in this case 1 minus 1 remains 0. We should be able to do that if that 500 meters per second uh, will in fact get him to the rescue vehicle. Now, for comparison's sake, um, let me remind you that orbital velocity on the moon in the stock Kerbal game is about well, I don't even know, it's like six, 700 meters per second. So I was thinking, well, this amount of speed should be able to get us into pretty much any suborbital hop trajectory that we can. Here we are. I'm just fiddling with the stages so that this rocket will, in fact, lift off in a proper and, uh, well, unexplody fashion. And I think that's me throttling up and jamming, mashing the space bar and going. So... Here we are, Bart Guard Kerman, he has all the science in his pod and he has a little bit of fuel and is now going to angle himself straight towards the target, the rescue vehicle, which is not set as a target, so he has to do that and it is a fairly, fairly long while away. Let's see if he makes it. We're pointing now at that target, not going to point into the ground of course, we're not quite high enough for that. We're going to make a nice parabolic arc and be a missile that is going to hit the rescue vehicle or is it? I'll shut up while he burns the fuel is about halfway through his available fuel already and if old me would be so kind to switch back to the map view he's not even getting anywhere near a nice suborbital a nice suborbital hop trajectory not exactly what is uh, in the cards for poor old Bart guard he is unfortunately past his point of no return actually no that's about now because uh, now he won't have the fuel to slow back down and land gently the, the capsule is definitely going to crash let's put it that way depends on if he's going to be brave enough to push it harder see always push it harder that's, that's a no-brainer always push it harder if he's going to push it harder and burn all his fuel trying to get to the rescue vehicle. Hey, who can blame me? He's been there for a few days now. He wants to get home. But let me spoil the ending, or well, the, the, the interlude. It's not going to happen. Look at that. That arc, it is, it is, it is an arc, but that's all it is. It's not, it's about halfway there. It's about halfway there. So, my back of the envelope guesstimate calculations tell me that if I get out now and angle his jetpack thrusters just right, I might be able to get him on a non crashing, non dying um, landing trajectory. But where would that leave the poor man? He would be standing in the middle of the moon, nowhere near a rescue vehicle or his capsule, which is facing imminent destruction. Let's not forget that in a spacesuit with probably limited consumables, even though consumables are the one thing these Kerbals here have an I infinite amounts of, so it seems. He is now going it alone, but he's going to, I don't know, despair, <laughs> thrust forward, review that science data one more time before uh, unfortunately passing away at high speed.
And with that said and done, let's transfer over to current me in a live update continuation commentary of this space program. What we're going to try is the following. We are going to see if the unmanned rescue ship can in fact get back to Kerbin. It will do so unmanned, but we will see if that works. So over to current me. And here we are. I called myself current me, but that of course was also current me, now relegated to old me. These terminologies for telling myself who I am, stolen from Scott Manley, are proving to be confusing because I'm always current me and I always was old me. And will I always be old me? I don't get it. Right. Back to the problem at hand. The rocket here that needs to go back to Kerbin. Bartgard didn't make it to his pickup but no matter because this is still potentially a mission somehow because if we can get this back to Kerbin there is science involved in retrieving a vessel from the surface of the moon this is something that has not been done before and therefore will net us science points the problem is this we have the uh, remote control pods here and of course we cannot decouple the center stages because then well hey they would cease to control the vessel so what we're trying is to get into a trajectory that will uh, intersect the atmosphere and then reconfigure the staging in such a way that we can ditch the capsule all at once and deploy the parachute and then hope that aerodynamic forces will orient this capsule completely empty in such a fashion as to well withstand re-entry or we can take the whole ship with us and do so in the atmosphere where we can at least put the orientation right and then ditch the capsule problem is then we might be attacked by rogue nuclear engines I'll make a decision as to what to do there in a little bit for now though let's just see if we can get off this uh, Moonar area we are on the poles so that makes things uh, slightly difficult we just need what we want to do is we want to launch upwards a little bit of course to get off the ground and then head a lunar retrograde which for us would be let's have a look at the nav ball I think heading towards a 90 degree direction but we're just going to fine-tune that when we are up I have trouble understanding yeah we need to go to a 90 or a 270 degree direction I think that would be fine anyway first things first lift off is here we have 2.3 kilometers per second of Delta V I have no idea if that's going to be enough but I sure as hell hope that it will be um, remember we cannot ditch these um, legs because that would mean well that would mean ditching the legs and that would mean that we don't have any control anymore okay I'm going to give a little bit of thrust in this direction see where we are now going that is the right way apparently Whew. that's hard to say that is hard to say I'm just going oh we are losing control my way of gauging where to go if, in case you haven't hadn't noticed yet is just to find out and just a point there, thrust for a bit and find out if that actually was the right way. You'll see if we are fall by one hundred if we fall short by one hundred meters per second, that is why, because I didn't do any trajectory sciencings. Wait, this is sort of the correct way. No, it's not. It's completely wrong. I think yes, it is in fact completely wrong. Stop that. On the other hand, it doesn't really matter so much because we need to get off this rock anyway I just want to do it that way is there anything we can target that's that way so we can look for it we can target Ike maybe yeah if we burn for Ike then that should be the proper heading or I should learn how the compass numbers work uh, I know how they work obviously but working from a pole burning in which which compass direction to to do it I fool it's crazy stuff. I have no idea how that works. I, I have an idea how that works. I'm not stupid. It's just not intuitive. Not intuitive for me because I'm well, I don't, not in the habit of often escaping from poles. Anyway, we're using celestial bodies as guide marks. That is something mariners have been doing for centuries, so it will serve us well. 1.7 kilometers of, per second of delta V remaining. I'm just going to 
go straight perpendicular to the surface. If we're going to escape, we're going to escape, and there's no use maximizing our time in the air, well, in the air above the surface. You know what I mean. Here we go. We have a good bit of arcing going on. I'm going to cut thrust now and see if I can set up a maneuver node that will get us uh, well anywhere near Earth and see if we will be able to make it. Ooh, this looks like something that might get us into the neighborhood. Ooh, that's 2.3. That's oh, how much do we have? We have 1.5, and 1.5 unfortunately is not enough to get us off the moon. No, so no gallant rescues. Let's see how much we would need approximately. I know there's more efficient ways to get the trajectory inside the well inside the atmosphere of Earth, but this will give us a ballpark estimate of the amount of delta V required. Oh well that just vanished. About three I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put it I'm gonna peg it at about three kilometers per second, which well how can I put this is something we don't have. We just don't have it. I do want to be able to put the periapsis in the planet from here, if at all possible. There we go, a little bit more like that, a little bit more that way, a little bit more that way, yes. More, 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 less, 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 less. 2.3, and we already burned like, well, we burned 200. So at least we know now that getting off the moon takes 2.3 kilometers per second of uh, 2.5 kilometers per second of delta v and that is with no margin for error. So for future missions we know 2.5 at minimum 3 to be safe and comfortable. No, 2.7 to be safe and 3 to be comfortable. So that's that for now. Oh, I'm no, no, no. Wait, I'm going to not waste this. I'm going to land it. No, I'm not going to land it. What's the point of that? There's no docking ports on it. No one could could return it. Uh, it's on the poles here. It's just completely worthless. I'm going to burn it into the ground because, well, why not? This is the people at Mission Control having a bad day. They already lost Bartgard. Now they lose their precious robot. And everybody on the streets are laughing at them. So, unhappy scientists there. I think this mission... Oh yeah, Bartgard did transmit some, but that was yesterday's episode already. Today's episode, we have no science. So, um, unhappy scientists, let me restate that. I'm going to time accelerate and crash this into the surface, just so we don't leave any orbital debris. And with that, I mean, of course, stuff that pollutes the tracking station, because... Well, there's going to be another nuclear reactor smeared out over yet another surface. Fortunately though, this surface is not our backyard, which means that we will be fine with it. One, two, three, explosion. Back to the space center. Let's have a quick look at all the Kerbals that have so far died. Yes, I think that's an appropriate thing to do once every now and then. Hey, Envin. Envin, he just strolled into the vehicle assembly building because the rocket that was on under construction needed a pilot. Lost. This is the list. Jebediah Kerman, Bill Kerman, Bob Kerman, Fredbury, Shepner, James, Desmond, Raylan, Jervin, Madbo, Elrod, Lemble, Herbury, Bartgart. Each and every one of their faces flash before my eyes before I go to bed. Not because I miss them, but because I can't wait to kill off more of their brethren. New grounds. Oh, he's in the ship already. Shalgun. Shalgun. Shalgun is still alive. He's one of the first. Oh, he's in orbit around the moon. We have to rescue him sometime. But for now, let's hire some new ones. Bobcott. Richesby. Sigamon. Or Sigimoni. Sigamoni. Sigimon. I think that should be a lady, Sigemon. Oh, Sigemon. Cork, Lubald, and Henber. These should last us one or two episodes at least. 
Right, so that's the astronauts taken care of. Let's proceed to R&D. Because we still have 93 science points from some previous escapades and episodes. Now what I'm going to do next episode is launch probes. You might have seen that I had the Kerbal alarm, cl alarm clock. It doesn't work in this screen, I don't know why. But we are looking at some transfer windows and I want to use this nuclear rocket tech to launch some probes and get some science from far off world. So expect that for next episode. I could get this, the thermometer, which will increase our science by a bit. By a bit, not by a lot. By a bit. And I could get the mobile processing lab. They're the same node. And this mobile lab, I think this is the regular stock lab, but upgraded by Kerbal Interstellar. And if I have one of these in orbit, it will generate science for me. It's got 10 mass, it's 10 tons. So that is already quite a hefty launch. So that's a nice mission prospect as well. Alternatively, I could look into planes to go for some s rapier engines, saber engines, um, but I've never really liked the plane stuff so much, so I'm going to hold off on that. Eventually, of course, I'm going to want this extra nuclear power, this extra heavy rocketry, but for that I need this node first, and that's 300 and I have 93. So, I'm going to forge ahead on the bottom bit of the part of the part of the tech tree and then also moving in the direction of these sensors these electricity parts, these radiators, they will be nice to have once we get into proper nukes and of course here these probe parts allowing us to squeeze a few more kilometers per second out with putting really really tiny craft on top of really really big rockets for now though first let's get this thermometer and laboratory parts so research that and there we go I think this episode has run on for long enough now. This was Lorenzo. Thank you for watching. Uh, check back tomorrow for the next episode. That will be mostly live again. And, well, live, you know, uh, not a post-commentary where I don't even know myself what's going on. Um, all I want to tell you is click, like, subscribe, comment, write some nice poems for me, and uh, because that's what I like. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.